Hi, and welcome back to Altair Solar. I'm your host, Ariane Escalante, and I'm joined by President Khalid Al Sheriff. Today, let's just talk about the basics. We have all heard of solar panels, but can you explain from your perspective, what is a solar panel and how does it work? Great, yeah. A solar panel is basically a panel made of a uh, semiconductor. What a semiconductor uh, is uh, basically is nor a conductor nor an insulator. It's a material that uh, can act sometimes as a conductor or as an insulator. Conductors would be metals, things like copper, aluminum, those are all metals, those are all conductors, meaning they conduct electricity. Uh, an insulator is something that you uh, actually use to prevent electricity from being conducted, like the, insulate, the insulator around the, the wire, for example, right? So you can touch the wire safely. Uh, examples would be plastic, obviously, as an insulator, or uh, carbon or other materials. So a semiconductor is this material that can act like both, depending on how you manufacture it and how you connect it. So sometimes it can act like a, a conductor, a metal, or sometimes can act as an insulator. So very fascinating. So silicon would be one of those materials, and silicon is actually the material of choice for most of the solar panels that we use in our homes. Uh, and so and the way it works is basically you have the sun rays coming down, uh, a component of that is a photon. A photon basically will get absorbed by the solar panel, the semiconductor, and there's something called the uh, um, electron band gap, which basically separates uh, the two materials uh, within the semiconductor. And then when the photon hits it, the electron actually movement starts happening, which creates current. And then when there's a load connected to the panel, a load meaning any circuit, uh, basically you start uh, producing electricity, direct current. Uh, so basically this is kind of what a solar panel is. There are different technologies. Let's say there's silicon base, there's things like thin film, uh, and this is thin film technology is mostly used in uh, solar farms because it's cheaper, but at the same time it's less efficient. Space is not a constraint, so we can, we can use it. Uh, opposite to space, space actually uses even more uh, uh, efficient uh, semiconductor, which is gallium arsenide. Uh, and because obviously there's no power source in space, we want to make sure to power the satellites or the space stations. So this we end up using gallium arsenide. We don't use it here because it's more expensive to manufacture than silicon, but in space obviously cost is not an issue. You really want to basically be producing um, you know, energy at the most efficient way uh, because the weight is a constraint in space. Here mostly is silicon and then uh, silicon manufacturing uh, for, for solar panels here, uh, basically it goes into two different, uh, uh, two different buckets or categories. We have monocrystalline silicon and we have polycrystalline silicon. Mono is basically the structure of the, uh, the lattice structure of, or the crystal structure of the silicon itself is more organized. So it gives it a little bit more efficiency versus the poly, which is mono is single and poly is multiple, right? So this is kind of the advantage. And for the normal consumer, the way you can tell the difference is the darker navy uh, panels those are monocrystalline and the lighter uh, blue colorish panels those are polycrystalline. Uh, most contractors will use monocrystalline silicon panels for uh, homes uh, because they're a little bit more efficient, they look aesthetically more pleasing uh, and then for commercial they'll use probably the polycrystalline silicon. Some people like the polycrystalline silicon because when the sun uh, reflect, you know when the sun basically shines on it it has a certain reflection so um, actually I was one time involved in this project in, in uh, Dubai and they had a Formula One or it was Abu Dhabi maybe they had a, a Formula One track at, uh, and they wanted to actually put polycrystal and silicon because they wanted the sun to reflect. Mm -hmm. So it depends on what you want, what you're trying to achieve out of the look of the solar panels. You go for one, one uh, basically one over the other. And how frequently would a residential homeowner choose the polycrystalline over the monocrystalline? Uh, it's very, um, you know, I don't think a lot of people do. The only reason maybe is because they're a little bit slightly cheaper. So maybe if you want to, don't want to spend, uh, you know, a lot of money on the system, uh, then you would go for polycrystalline silicon. But actually, most people want more efficient panels because they want less panels because there's constraint on a residence. You know, the roof is not that big. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you target uh, your electrical consumption through uh, the solar panels that you have on your roof. So you want to make sure you go for something more efficient. But again, if you're after the look of something a little bit uh, different, like in Germany, for example, they like a uh, silver frame panel. And in the US here, we love black frame panels, you know. So, you know, different cultures, different looks, you know. So it really depends, you know, on what you want to achieve. But uh, for efficiency, definitely monocrystalline would be the way to go. And what about the price differences between the two? 
Uh, not that big, you know, so it depends on the, on the panel manufacturing itself, like the, the brand of the panel. So the price, uh, there's a price difference. They're obviously cheaper polycrystal and silicon because it's cheaper to manufacture. Uh, you know, so, and again, uh, it's, uh, it depends on the brand itself, but you know, overall, if you're comparing apples to apples, meaning if you're comparing, let's say, a uh, certain brand, uh, then polycrystal and silicon, if, if the manufacturer, not all manufacturers make both, but let's say if you have a manufacturer that make, that's making both, for sure the polycrystalline would be cheaper than the monocrystalline. Yeah. And when you're working with your customers, how do you help them choose what is best for them, how many panels they need, what types of panels, and maybe even the brand? Right, uh, you know, it's a good question because we want to make sure that uh, we offer something that's gonna last the 25 year, the warranty term for the, you know, for the solar system panel or the solar system itself. So, you know, we recommend typically uh, like well-known brands, you know, like Panasonic, uh, RAC, LG, we did when they were in business. Unfortunately, they decided to exit the solar business. Uh, so then these, the, because, because, you know, the question of the warranty, right? Is my warranty, how valid is my warranty? So we want to make sure to recommend the company that's going to be around for the duration of the warranty. And also uh, from a technology standpoint, we want to make sure to offer something that's going to deliver what's been promised. So a lot of panels will put a sticker and say this panel will produce 350 watts. But in real life testing, which I've done, I used to in my previous life, I used to have, uh, you know, I used to be an engineer and I used to actually uh, test these things in the field. And when I tested them, some panels say they produce this much, but they actually don't produce this much. So, uh, you know, it's hard to, to, uh, to gauge how much it produces. So that's why then you want to go for the brands that are well trusted the well-known brands because they actually produce what they say they produce regardless of the fact that some manufacturers will give you uh, they'll give you this warranty production guarantee but again the panels will actually not produce what they say they produce so you want to make sure again you you know you go for ask your solar contractor if they have access to the uh, premium brands because in general they'll be better not that the one the other ones are not going to produce or produce but they produce a little bit less um, you know in the grand scheme of things uh, on a 20 panel system, let's say this is, is not going to make a difference. But on a commercial side, it does make a huge difference because let's say you can have a thousand panels and if the panels are off by just two or three percent, that's a, that's a, that's a lot of uh, basically waste at that point. I know for a lot of people, the reason that we even choose to invest in solar panels in the first place is to save money. So in your opinion, is it more financially beneficial to go with some of the larger brands to begin with? Uh, yes, I absolutely think so, even though they might be a little bit more expensive uh, up front. But again, you know, it's they're going to deliver on the on the you know, on the promise like this panel is producing 350 watts. It will produce 350 watts and then it's going to degrade every year by a quarter percent or so. The, again, the Panasonic example is, uh, you know, they have the Ever Evervolt uh, uh, series. Uh, they, they have an annual degradation of a quarter percent. So that's exactly how much it will, it will actually lose, you know, on an annual basis. So versus a less known brand, you know, will have uh, basically a higher degradation or maybe they're not going to even produce what they said they produce, you know. So definitely investing upfront, even though it's a little bit more. And again, the question of the company going out of business, right? So at that point, let's say you went for a, for a cheaper brand and then, you know, the company is no longer in existence. And let's say that, that, that a panel or two go bad, uh, then you're stuck paying out of pocket for those, you know. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much for breaking that down. Again, this is Altair Solar President Khalid Al Sheriff. I'm Ariana Escalante. We're here in these conversations to answer your questions. So please let us know if you'd like us to chat about anything else, and we'll see you soon.